Club, it's happened again. The second high-profile manager in a space of 24 hours has announced he'll be leaving at the end of the season, but this in very different circumstances. Xavi's Barcelona lost today 5-3 at home against Villarreal, and then after the game, he issued this statement to the awaiting press, who were made to wait a while. I'd like to announce that I will not remain Barca manager beyond the end of this season. I've decided a few days ago, but I think now is the moment to announce it. The club needs a change of dynamic. And as a Barca fan, thinking of the club's best interests of the players, I think it's the right decision. I've spoken about it with President Laporta. I'll give everything in the four months I have left. I still think we can have a good season and I hope we can turn things around. Firma Barcelona player Luis Garcia is with us. Luis, are you surprised? A little bit because of the timing and uh, to say, yes, we're half of the season yet to, to be played and no surprise because I think the, the Xavi realized uh, no long ago that he, he lost the, the, the handle of, of the team. He lost the, the, the way of convincing the team that they could do something exactly the same like last year. They won the trophy, uh, two trophies actually, La Liga and the Super Cup. And they thought that this year uh, they were going to challenge for every single trophy. And in a matter of 10 days, they lost three of them because I think that for the, the, the race of La Liga, they probably are out. So a little bit of a surprise, uh, but no shock because uh, I can't understand totally what is he going through. It's interesting, isn't it, Luis, you look back to last season where it was a comfortable victory in the end for, for La Liga title, but people were critical of his style of play. Was it trying to change that and play more as Barcelona fans expect that caught him out? Yeah, probably. And we've seen that um, no long ago with uh, Simeone. Everybody was asking him to, to change the way because of the talent of their, of their players. And the moment they changed, results were not arriving and he decided to move back to the basics and start defending better, a compact. Nothing chubby this year. And wanted to try to find that excellency that he talked about for, since uh, the moment he arrived uh, to Barcelona as a manager. And he's been on the chase of, of doing that. We've seen a very good Barcelona for some moments, probably not as consistent as everybody was expecting. Results were there because last year they managed to be very solid, a mm. very strong team, difficult to, to beat, but definitely not the way, not as a flow as he was expecting, not as dazzling as he was expecting. And this year, probably trying to change that, trying to be more dominant, trying to commit more players, creating more, and being a, a team who uh, could show the world the, the style of play of Barcelona. Probably he lost that handle at the back. And well, right now, it's very difficult to see a structure, to see a team that is consistent or solid in the, at the back. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it, Luis? You think you conceded five today. You, of course, conceded four against Atleti, four against Real Madrid as well. It's that foundation at the back that was so solid last season has just crumbled. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's strange to see it because uh, they haven't changed much. I, I, I will say that even the players that they arrive, like Ancelo, could uh, add something extra to, to the team. But definitely that, uh, that is starting the way the Barcelona started in the beginning of the season with so many doubts, with a view of uh, not helping with Romeo. We cannot really forget that last year there was a big, important player managing and handling this team, that it was no other than the Busquets. Uh, Sergio Busquets has he, been for such a, a long time a player who make the difference into the middle. And not having that kind of player, that style of player, I think that he's been uh, struggling Barcelona to find it. Not with Romeo, not with Gundogan, not with Frank de Jong, not even uh, grabbing Gavi and putting him there. So I think that in the end, uh, just that small piece could change the whole situation of Barcelona. And to arrive to this point where they look so vulnerable at the back, there are so many doubts, there are so many... The body language the player uh, says everything. And today, definitely, it was uh, um, very sad to see the players leaving the, the stadium the way that they left. Uh, Gemma Soler joins us now. She's literally just come from that defeat against Villarreal at the Montjuï. Uh, Gemma, did you have any sort of sense going into this game that the decision had already been made from Xavi that he was going to leave? <sighs> Hola, Dan. Uh, no, we didn't have uh, this kind of feeling because he always said to us, he always explained that this is the, his dream job and he would never resign. So that was the feeling we had. Um, he said in the press conference in a very um, 
honest and I think sentimental press conference to announce that he will be leaving the club at the end of the season, that he had already uh, took this decision, but he decided to tell anyone yet. And actually, uh, to put a little bit of context, just before that announcement, he came to us, not to us specifically, to, to ESPN. Usually he does a flash interview with us. Um, he decided to only do it to a couple of uh, international media. He didn't say absolutely nothing like that. And then um, there was a delay in the press conference. He always talked first to us, uh, the media with right holders, and then uh, he goes to the press conference. And the, that press conference was never starting. Then we found out that he was in a meeting with the president in, and with some uh, key members of the board of members. And, and there was a big delay. So we were expecting something was about to happen. And then he decided to, to uh, we were asked to the entourage of Laporta and what they told us is that Laporta, President Laporta, will show him his support. And, and that's what we were expecting. And it's what happened in that uh, meeting, a private meeting. And then Xavi said that he decided that a bit earlier and he will leave the club at the end of the season. So I think there is a, a little bit of uh, uh, improvising uh, at some point. Point. Uh, what we could find out about that meeting, it, it was a, a friendly meeting with a friendly atmosphere that the president tried him to convince not to send this message yet. But Xavi decided because he thinks he, it's the best thing for for the club. Uh, he, they tell us that he will be generous because he has still uh, one more year of a contract, two more years, I mean, and he will resign to that to that money at the end of the season. And there was some kind of economical agreement as well in that in that meeting. So we didn't, uh, we were not expecting that because probably then we were not expecting mm. that uh, uh, Barcelona will lose this game and he, they will concede five goals. That it's something that never happened to Barcelona at home since the 60s. Why stay? Why not just cut now, cut your ties and leave? Because if you're not getting a tune out of this squad now, why would they perform for you knowing that you're going at the end of the season? I'm not sure that this squad will perform for Xavi. For Xavi. Then the, the question becomes, if he does leave, who fills, who fills that void? Is it Rafa Marquez getting promoted from, from, from the B team? Um, does he have the experience to turn this squad around? Does he just kind of have the, the persona with, with a, a troubled dressing room to, to somehow right, right the ship? I, I'm not sure that, that there's the right answer. And then because of Barcelona's own financial issues, there is not the option to bring somebody else in. So I, I think it, it kind of maybe ties Xavi's, if not Laporta's hands, in terms, of, in terms of what that next step is. Maybe least damage is done in just seeing out this season for what it is. Hopefully you still finish top four. I certainly think any kind of silverware between now and the end of the season is, is beyond this version of Barcelona. So limp along, finish top four, and then... Uh, a clean break and, a clean, and, more importantly, a clean start for a, a new manager come, come next season. Here's the problem, though, Luis. You're only three points away from Athletic Club, who sit fifth at the moment in, in the Champions League. So what happens if you don't get a response from the players? What happens if this slippery slope continues in the wrong direction? Surely at some stage, Laporte is going to panic, isn't he, and say, look, forget June the 30th, out the door now. Well, that's something that is very difficult to, 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 to see in the future. Of course, uh, the ways the, the, the things are looking at the moment is, is, is dangerous, is scary, because not because of the three points from Atletico de Bilbao, not because of the three points that Atletico de Madrid are behind and probably tomorrow they are going to be close to you. It's because the way that we've seen Barcelona tonight, the mm. way that they, there was no arguments to, to try to get back, the way that there is no consistency at all during the last couple of months, that's something that is the, the big concern. That's the, the, the big problem. I'm not worried about if they are going to... I think that in the end, because of the talent that, that, that this squad is, is got, at the end, they managed to uh, end up with a fourth position and, and in Champions League next season. But it's how are you going to handle the situation? How are you going to address everything, put all together, and to arrive to in the end of the season, at least looking as Barcelona? And it's not easy. Definitely, it's not easy because, again, what we've seen today, it, it was a, a really sad team. Uh, without answers, without way of seeing uh, a future, hopes. And that's why Xavi decided to, to step on the side and see what happened at the end of the season. But definitely, it's very difficult to see 
and not playing Champions League uh, once again in Barcelona because I don't even want to think what it will happen if Barcelona doesn't mm. uh, receive the money that the UEFA give you when you are in, in the competition. And that is a big word, isn't it, of course, Gemma? Because yesterday we were talking about who's going to take over at Liverpool, mentioning all, some of the biggest names around at the moment. You can't really do the same with Barcelona because all of their money problems. Because what are you taking over? Because everything that's happened over the last few seasons... It's going to come to a head this summer. And if you're a manager, a top-tier manager, a manager that Barcelona should be pursuing, you don't want anywhere near that, do you? No, I mean, Barcelona, they won't be able to get the manager they want. They will be able to get who they can afford and who is uh, willing to go to a club where he will probably not be able to, to choose the, the players because they don't have money to, to do so. And, and they will actually will be able to sign a manager because of Xavi. He decided to resign to one-year contract. Um, so uh, we're talking about this uh, uh, yesterday, yes, Dan, and, and we talk about the, the probably the, the, the most easy uh, person that we could see Rafa Marquez because he's in the club, he already has a contract and he has the full confidence of Joan Laporta. But uh, what we could ask today after what happened is that uh, now the, the board of members, they think they should bring someone with a little bit more experience because if the experiment with Rafa Marquez doesn't work, then the, the, they, the fan base will point at the president, of course. There's also uh, another person that Laporta likes, is Thiago Mota, mm. uh, but it will be in the same direction. So, uh, he always uh, he always liked the German line. We can say it like that before Xavi, uh, because Xavi was not his first choice. He tried with uh, Tuchel Nagelsmann, and of course now uh, uh, Jurgen Klopp is in the the feeling or in the dreams of, of every Barcelona's fan base. But I think this is a pipe dream because mm. there's no money if, uh, to bring Jurgen Klopp and the players that he needs, he wants, or or this thing. So. If, it's Jurgen Klopp willing to go to move to a very beautiful city with a very nice uh, skyline and, and beach and, and a good paella. And he really <laughs> feels like that. Oh, I think a top team manager will go to Barcelona. Not right now. It's a top team. It's a club with a lot of history. But it, it will mean to, br to, bring, to build something very complicated from, from a very uh, low point. He didn't have the energy to deal with Liverpool. He the energy to deal with Barcelona, given the state that they're in at the moment. Uh, Luis... Simple question then. You're in charge of Barcelona. Who do you hire? It's very difficult at the moment. I will go definitely if I if <laughs> Xavi is uh, moved uh, to the side and I need to choose, I will definitely give a chance uh, to Rafa Marquez. Um, right. No, because I, I know that and I understand what Gemma is saying, but I'm sure that they are hundreds of managers waiting for the for Barcelona to raise the hand and say who wants to come because if I will if I'm a, I'm a, actually I'm a manager but I'm not going to say that I'm going to manage Barcelona but if I'm a manager and Barcelona is open <laughs> I'm going to go for sure if I have the opportunity to go I'm going to sign it straight away as soon as Barcelona give me a ring so I'm sure that there are going to be options I'm sure that there are going to be managers ready to to give everything for this Barcelona because again the things are not going well, but if you have a look to the squad of Barcelona, it's a very good squad with a lot of young talents for the next coming future. So I think that is a is a piece of cake right now. It's a it's a team that everybody would love to go and try to do their best. If I have to choose, I will stick with uh, Rafa Marquez and give it a chance because if we go back in time, Luis Enrique didn't have experience, Pep Guardiola didn't have experience, and everything worked. That didn't work with Xavi doesn't mean that it couldn't work with someone else. Now, Luis, if you think back to our New Year's Day episode, we asked for big predictions in 2024, and who could forget Shaka's that Michel, the Girona manager, would be in charge at Barcelona at the start of next season. Is that feasible? It could be. It could be because um, uh, the way that... Uh, Mitchell has been handling the things in the past five years. It's been brilliant. Everybody uh, sees that relationship between the style of play of, of Girona and the way the Football Club Barcelona is, uh, likes to play or his uh, is, is philosophy. And why not he could have the chance? Because I think he's a manager on the on the verge of having a chance of, of having a, a, an important team, a top team. He's been handling medium teams of teams that have been uh, we, uh, with the stress or the pressure of being uh, promoting or, or, or on relegation spots. And maybe it's arrived at uh, the time of having a, a manager like him. There is a lot of talks about uh, Roberto Di Servi. There is a manager suddenly from nowhere mm. has made uh, 
uh, a team like Brighton play one of the most beautiful uh, uh, style of play. And you have to give the opportunity to this kind of manager who are willing to give a spectacle, who, uh, who brings good football without the, being afraid of losing or being afraid of not, or, or not getting the results.